Hello everyone and welcome to, uh, really, it's one of those games that you want to show your friends and family as soon as you see, see them. Uh, we are going to take a short break from the Capablanca saga as you really have to see this. It's a game from the uh, second Grandmaster Goa Tournament International in 2019. It was played yesterday uh, and it's a game uh, between International Master from India, Kantoli Ratnakaran, and Grandmaster from Georgia, uh, Mikhail Mekedlishvili. It's a really an intense game. And, uh, well, uh, more, more than once uh, Ratnakaran earned himself the title of uh, Indian Tal. Now, why he earned himself the title of Indian Tal, uh, we'll just have to check, uh, check this game out and see. Uh, so, without further ado, let's just enjoy it. Uh, Mekdalishvili opens with c4. Uh, the English opening with e5, knight to c3, knight to c6, so the reversed uh, Sicilian line of the English. Knight of 3 with f5 by black, uh, and now g3, preparing to fianchetto the light square bishop. Uh, we have knight to f6 and now d4. <clears throat> uh, and here black has to make a choice. Does he want to capture in the center or does he want to grab more space with e4? Here Ratnakaran uh, goes for more space with e4. And although there are some games in the database where d5 was played, uh, white didn't really have all that many success. All, uh, so knight to h4. Uh, this is the main line with d5 by black. And uh, now not allowing white to push d5 any anytime soon with bishop to g5 and here uh, it's still a known position d captures on c4 is a known move here most notable game where it was played Wang Hao versus Fedosev in the Henkri China in 2019 uh, where uh, where uh, black won a very nice game uh, but here we have uh, c uh, we have bishop to b4 still it's not a new move uh, it's a known position. E3 uh, is the main main idea here. Well, up until now, uh, it was played uh, in uh, the game Krishna Sasikran versus um, uh, Tiger Hiller Person, uh, but uh, Sasikran was able to win that game with black. But here we have a different idea. C, not E3, but C captures on D5. It's a new move, uh, which makes this game even more interesting because, uh, well, it's just it just says that uh, Ratnakaran did not have uh, this uh, prepared. Uh, so here, what do you do here? Uh, obviously, you have to do something. You can't capture with the knight as uh, your knight is pinned here. And if you capture with the queen, you're just gonna uh, get bishop captures on f6. Your pawn structure on the king side will be ruined. Uh, so what do you play here? Well, it's true that if you capture with the knight, your queen will be captured. But this is exactly what Ratnakaran played. Knight captures on d5. And now you don't really have an option here. You have to capture the queen. Otherwise, you're just worse. You just lost a pawn. And there's a double attack against your c3 knight. Yes, you could play bishop d2, but uh, that's just like admitting uh, uh, you completely missed this move and you're just gonna be worse for the rest of the game. Uh, so here, of course, Mekdalishvili captured the queen and now we get knight captures on c3. So what happens here? Of course, you cannot capture the knight. If you capture, the king has nowhere to go. You have to block with the queen. And after all is said and done, captures, captures, captures. Uh, black would just be up a pawn and, uh, well, again, enjoying a, a much better game. So after knight captures on c3, uh, white, of course, cannot recapture. We have queen to b3. Uh, now, either black will capture uh, here uh, and then lose uh, castling privileges. Or if you capture with the knight, then even the bishop on b4 is uh, under attack. So again, what do you play here? A very interesting position where you could go for something like knight captures on d4. Uh, attack the queen, force the queen to capture a bishop, then knight c2 check, pick up the queen. Uh, the problem is after king d2, yes you do pick up the queen, but now b captures on c3 attacks the knight. Uh, so you either, uh, there, there's no good move here. Uh, if you move the knight, then white moves the bishop and still uh, it doesn't work. If you capture the bishop, uh, white captures the knight. And if you count the pieces, white is just up a knight. So of course, in a winning game. So here, after queen to b3, uh, Ratnakaran played knight captures on e2 with a discovered check. It's much better uh, because now you have to move the king. If you capture, now you get knight captures on d4 with a nice clean fork. Uh, so after the king moves, you get knight captures here, a captures, and after king captures on d8, you would just have this, uh, well, the queens are off the board, and black is now just uh, up two pawns. With a much better position with the bishop pair, uh, black, black would win this game. So, after knight captures on e2, we have king to d1 by Mechlishvili, and now comes knight uh, e captures on d4. Again, uh, just getting the knight back into the game, attacking the queen. White again has to waste the move, moving the queen. Queen to e3 was played, and now the idea is, okay, if king captures, then queen g5 check. You can start picking up some pawns here on the king side. But here, Ratnakaran uh, doesn't waste any time. Bishop to e6, really just a... Uh, 
Uh, just a wonderful idea, uh, all, you know, just going for the initiative, uh, creating <laughs> a beautiful game. Uh, so what's the idea? Here you can either move the bishop or capture on c7. If you capture on c7, black will get a lot of development for this. Uh, rook c8 attacks the bishop, bishop f4, now you can castle kingside. This rook will come to d8, and with this king still being on d1, it's going to be uh, one hell of a game for, for white. So here, Mekedlishvili tried a different approach. Bishop to g5, uh, but now uh, Ratnakaran just plays h6. And now, what do you do here? If you move the bishop... Uh, uh, to f4 then you can get to g5 which wins back the piece or just a nice queenside castle once the rook gets to d8 and the white deals with this only then can you push g5 uh, so here he decided to retreat bishop to f6 he gives up the bishop this way to mess up black's pawn structure uh, with g captures uh, on f6 and now king to c1 just getting his king away from the d file as of course queenside castle is coming uh, so Ratnakaran goes for queenside castle, and now bishop to h3. He goes after this pawn here, uh, with bishop to c5, uh, threatening some nice discoveries here, and now bishop captures on f5. Uh, this was white's plan, uh, because now some queen knight b3 check action is not possible. You will not be winning the queen, because queen can capture on b3, and you cannot recapture as your bishop is pinned here. So you will just uh, you know lose the piece and the game. So, after bishop captures on f5, we have knight captures on f5, now the bishop is unguarded, bishop, uh, queen captures on c5, knight captures on h4, g captures on h4, and now rook to d4. Uh, Black is very happy with his position, he's preparing uh, rook to d8, the double up rooks on the d file and while you could argue that white is still up material one uh, first you have to you know get your king to safety and develop this rook and only then can you even start playing this game with white uh, with b3 by white and now rook h to d8 as planned uh, rook to b1 and now bishop to g4 uh, really controlling that d1 square uh, with king to b2 now, uh, as rook to d1 was the idea, uh, and now you want to hide your king over to a1, uh, where it will be much safer. Here we have knight to b4. Again, uh, really just, uh, you know, every move is really, <laughs> really comes as a slap in the face. Uh, why is black giving up this uh, a7 pawn here? It's uh, really hard to understand. Uh, because if you capture, yes, you do You do get rook d2 check. And after king to a1, now uh, you could either go into some weird endgame where you will be uh, up the ex uh, down the exchange but up a pawn and white will have uh, a doubled h pawn. Uh, not, <clears throat> uh, not something black can push for a win. But I think uh, uh, black uh, played this move uh, simply going for a draw here. Because after knight c2 check, king b2, knight back to b4 check, king c1, and now you just repeat. Uh, or, or you go into this, but I don't think this was the idea. Uh, so here, white doesn't want to draw. Here, he doesn't capture on a7. First, king to a1, doesn't allow rook, d, rook d2 to come with check. And now, b6. No longer are you capturing on a7 with queen to c3, and now c5 just, uh, you know, uh, increasing the control over uh, the b4 and d4 squares. With a3, pushing the knight back, knight d5 attacks the queen, and now queen to c1. Uh, and now h5, uh, just improving the position. The bishop is now nicely guarded here, and now rook to g1. Rook to g1, probably with ideas of, uh, as this is a double pawn, you want to play h3 at some point, force the bishop to capture it, and then get your rook over to g7. Maybe you could even infiltrate somehow with the queen, let's say... <clears throat> Uh, queen f1, maybe followed by queen to a6 check, and then something. It's a, it's a long plan, but perhaps it, it, it could be possible. Uh, here we have rook to d3, now pressuring the, the pawn here, but uh, really the idea is just knight to c3. And then followed by, of course, knight to e2, which would win a lot of material. Uh, queen to c4, getting the queen into the game here. Uh, again, uh, queen a6, perhaps, uh, you know, the plan could be, become possible. Uh, but... Uh, here, rook to d4. Black even offers a queen to a6 check here, uh, although it's uh, not possible here, the line we mentioned. For example, queen a6 check, uh, king to b8, and now h3. Yes, uh, now, you, if you capture, you do get rook to b7. Uh, the problem here for, uh, for white is knight to c3. And now, you don't have a good move here. Uh, your uh, rook is under attack. If you move it, let's say rook to c1, uh, then you get bishop to e2 and the queen is trapped. The queen has nowhere to go. The knight guards the bishop uh, and also the a4 square. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if after knight to c3, uh, you continue with uh, 
h captures on g3, then black doesn't capture the rook, rather rook to d2, and there's no stopping mate. Uh, you could prolong it, uh, for example, with rook to b2, but then rook d1 check. Rook b1, and now just uh, the other rook comes here, and it's all over. And again, there's no stopping mate here. Even if you give up the queen, it will still be mate, as uh, rook to a2 will be checkmate. Uh, let me just have a nice sip of my water. Uh, so, after rook to d4, we have queen to c1, not interested in queen to a6, queen back to c1, and now rook to d3. We have uh, now not repeating queen to c4, Mekilishvili still not interested uh, in a draw, he is the grandmaster here playing against an international master, uh, he wants to punish his opponent's insolent play. Uh, so, b4, opening up the lines uh, to the black king. Uh, now, knight to c3, as planned, uh, there are some nice ideas here, like knight to e2, just winning material, there's no point in moving the rook, uh, so we have queen to b2, uh, knight captures on b1, we have rook captures on b1, and now rook to f3, <coughs> uh, we have b captures on c5, and now rook d to d3, and here, uh, you no longer have the option of giving up your queen for some material because now it's rook rook bishop against a queen and rook. So here you could uh, you could give up your queen for two rooks, but but no less. Uh, queen to b5 by white, and now comes rook captures on a3 with check. King to b2, and now bishop to d7, just uh, kicking the queen away. And now again, white has to decide. He could play c6, push the bishop back. Uh, let's say bishop to e6, and then queen captures on h5. But then you would get rook to a2 check, king to c1, and now king to c7, uh, just blocking that rook. And if queen to e8, going for an attack against the bishop and some uh, harassing ideas here, uh, now you just play rook c3 check, king to d1, and rook captures on c6, eliminates this pawn, defends the bishop, and now black is just better here. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, if you if you ask the computer, but uh, in the in humans human play, of course, black will be, have the upper hand here. So after bishop d7, we have queen to c4, uh, and now comes rook to a4, attacking the queen. Queen back to g8, check. King to b7, uh, and now rook to d1. Finally, white is able to activate the rook, but now rook captures on f2 with check. King to b3, now rook to f3 check, the bishop guards the rook here, so it's not a problem. King to b2, and now comes rook to b4 check. King to c1, and now rook to c3 with check. Uh, king to d2, and only now that uh, the king is blocking the rook's attack towards the bishop, rook captures on c5, and now again, uh, black is just better here, uh, now it's black who is up material, plus he has, uh, well, four passed pawns, so that's also a big plus. Uh, we have king to e1, again threatening to capture the bishop here, bishop to a4 with an attack against the rook, queen f7 check, rook to c7, and now queen to d5 check. Uh, bishop to c6, blocking check and putting defense, more defense to the e4 pawn, uh, and now queen captures on h5, and here rook to g7, with ideas of rook to b2 followed by rook to g1 checkmate. Uh, we have rook to d6 here, and here after rook to b2, it was in this position that Georgian Grandmaster Mikhail Mekedlishvili resigned the game. Uh, why did he resign? Uh, well, it's just uh, too hard to play this. Rook to d2, rook uh, g1 is the threat of checkmate. If you play something like king f1, you get bishop b5 check, and now again you have to move the king and uh, allow checkmate, or you will give up the queen, so that's also not something you want to do. Uh, on the other hand, uh, after rook to b2, you could try rook to d2. Now, if rook g1 check, you will be able to run back with the king, but again, uh, black will just prepare it and everything will be fine. Uh, for example, if rook to g1 check, uh, you will play king to f2, attacking the rook, and now you don't want to play something like captures, captures, and e3. This will not work. It seems like it's completely winning for black, but it's actually not. King f1, and now if e2 check, you're just going to go king e1, and it's uh, hard to find where you're going to go with the rook, because you can't keep on defending the e2 pawn. If you go something like uh, uh, rook a2, queen f7 check, picks up the rook. It's uh, pretty much the same if you go here. Uh, again, you get queen, queen h7 check now. Uh, and now, what do, you, what do you do here? If you stay on the last two ranks, you will get, uh, you know, harassed uh, by perpetual checks. If you go here, uh, then uh, you will get this check. Once you go back, uh, white just repeats. Uh, and if you go here or block with the bishop, then it's just queen a3 picks up the rook. So, not the way you want to play this. 
uh, how you want to play this is that uh, after this uh, rook to d2, you want to play rook to g1 check right away. Uh, not, not rook to g1, but rook to b1 check right away. And now, uh, after something like king to f2, now you play rook to b3, threatening e3 to win the rook here. And only after king e2, now you play rook to f3. Uh, now preparing rook to g2. Uh, and after rook to d6, getting the rook out of the way, rook to g2 check. King to e1, and now you're gonna go rook to a3, and now really there is not all that much. Now mate is properly properly prepared. If queen f7 check, you're gonna go king a6. Uh, if queen e6, going after the pawn, just bishop b5, uh, also the bishop is under attack. Uh, and after captures here, just rook a1 check, there's uh, n nothing more white could have done. Captures, not here obviously, captures here, and uh, now it's all, all over for white. Uh, but uh, Mekedlishvili uh, saw that uh, even with uh, uh, the most precise play, there is no way he could get out of this. So after this rook to b2 move, he resigned the game. And uh, a wonderful, wonderful victory by uh, Kantoli Ratnakaran, the Indian Tal. Uh, really, after that game by, by Murli Kartekin, uh, sacrificing his queen brilliantly. Uh, it's, uh, I think, uh, in the article by Chess Base India, they mentioned it's uh, like eight or nine days after that game. But... Uh, just a uh, uh, wonderful, wonderful chess. So I do hope you enjoy that. Uh, let's uh, just see it one more time, uh, you know, so to say in slow motion. Uh, after C captures on D5, we had Knight captures on D5. And this is just, uh, uh, this is just beautiful. Uh, so let's leave it at that. Uh, like I said, uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Do check out the article by Chess Base India. It will be the first link you, you see in the description below where they talk a bit more about the uh, Indian Tal, Kantoli Ratnakaran. Uh, they, uh, there are some uh, other games played by him. You really want to check them out. And, uh, you know, we, we might even uh, <laughs> uh, share a nice series uh, on him in the future as he really has some very exciting games. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Paul Roldan, Frank Holmes, Edwin Park, uh, Katie Alberico, and Will Potter uh, for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. And uh, to answer your question, Mr. Park, I am from Croatia, uh, if, uh, if, you, if that is not known. Uh, so, there's that. Uh, and yeah, uh, as usual, you can check to my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the Capablanca saga, checking up on your suggestions such as this one. Thank you for that. Uh, and, you know, just uh, doing what we usually do. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.